Hello, good morning, everyone. This is Elena. I'm, I'm the marketing manager for EuroWest for SolidWorks. And I'm happy to welcome you to this webinar about what's new for SOLIDWORKS 2020. I'm happy to see people from different parts of the world. For instance, we have people from Portugal, South Africa, Pakistan, many places, Kenya. Thank you for joining us. And I'm happy to introduce you our, my colleague, which is Modas Nashin. He's our senior technical specialist and he's based in, in Dubai. And he will be presenting this webinar. So Mwatas, if you want, we can start. And but before starting, we would like to know a little bit more about you. So we'd like to know which SolidWorks version are you using today? So Mwatas, I will leave you the floor and I will come back later to ask more questions. Okay. Thank you, thank you Alina. And um, thank you for all of you to have, um, um, to accept our invitation and have you today with the what's new um, uh, topic in 2020. Today, we will be focused more um, in more details in four topics, uh, speaking about user experience. So what does it mean, user experience? It's all about productivity. And um, each year, um, we are listening from you, and we are trying to convert your brilliant ideas into new features and upgrades in SolidWorks new version. And um, um, to do so, we are trying to reduce the mouse movement, for example. So we are trying to give you more um, direct features. Um, so, and today we will be speaking about um, four topics. The first one is the flexible component. Um, how are we going to use it? What does it mean, flexible component? And what's the simple idea behind the scene when using flexible component? And then we will be speaking about um, how can we repair um, when, once we do have a design changes in the fillet and chamfer. Um, and then we will be speaking about the surface offset and also the thicken as well. Um, and finally, we will um, um, speak in, in more details about the mesh editing, not only um, the body compare. Um, so uh, let's get it started. Um, with the first thing, it's, it's the flexible component. It means that all the components that you're going to use them in different locations of the main assembly or maybe in different assemblies. So for example, if you do have a spring, if you do have a, a plastic flexible component like this hinge or the pillow, so how can we um, use them in different locations inside the assembly that they can enable change the geometry without changing the original component. Um, and to see that in action, we do have um, um, some case study from a success story from OMAX. And what they are doing, um, they are doing um, um, a five axis plasma machines. And um, as you can see here, um, they do have a challenge um, in covering um, the mechanism. And to be able to do that, they have created these components as flexible sub-assemblies. And then what they need to do is to insert covering just to prevent um, all the dust or maybe um, scrap materials to hit into that mechanism. And to do so, um, we are inserting the, the pillows, but we have to change the pillows each time we are inserting it into different locations. So for example, here, I need to make that flexible. And SolidWorks is asking me um, which reference that I need to put that uh, pillow with, that component, the flexible component. And as you can see, once we are um, changing the, to the new location of the head, the whole bill will be deformed and um, to be flexible to um, optimize to the new mechanism position. And similarly, we're going to do this in, in the other side um, of the head, of the machine head. And as you can see also, once we are moving, we are getting back to um, the location. So this could be applied to any flex flexible component like uh, for example, the springs, um, the hinge components, the plax, uh, um, uh, plastic parts. And um, how, how did we do this? That's, that's the point. So 
um, what we should take in consideration while creating um, the flexible components. That's um, what I'm going to show you now. So this is a normal components that I have created with the normal geometries, just um, couple of lines, um, dimensions, I make them equal. But here is the most important thing that I link it the length of the billow with the coincident relation with a plane. And this plane, actually, I have created that um, plane called flex plane. And um, it has a dimension from the top plane um, that's, for example, with a, um, a certain distance. So for now, if I'm changing the distance from that plane, of course, I'll be changing the geometry of the billow, right? So how can we use it inside an assembly? Um, Simply, we're going to insert that first into um, a sample assembly, or could it be a library assembly, just to test the performance, the behavior of the flexible component. And after that, uh, we create a plane called plane one, and this plane with a particular distance from the top plane as well. So it's free now. And what I have to do is to link that flexible component, I mean, edit the feature of the flex plane, and then make it coincident with the plane on the main assembly. By this way, if I'm changing the plane in the main assembly, of course, it will change the geometry. So um, this is a predictable behavior in SolidWorks. And now I'm done. I'm, I'm ready to use this component, the pillow component, in any assembly. So I will show you how to do that. Simply, we're going to save the component and then we will insert it into another assembly. And then I will use a flexible. So, of course, SOLIDWORKS will ask that, hey, there, there is a missing reference somewhere. And um, once I'm hitting make it flexible component, SOLIDWORKS will ask me, where do you need to reference this um, uh, plane, the, the missing reference? And then I'm selecting one of the faces of the plates of the mid plates. And by this way, if I'm changing the position of the mid plate, both of them will be changing independently, which means that I can also do the same with um, another assembly. Could be uh, sub-assembly, could be whatever, but remember, if you're gonna use the flexible component inside uh, sub-assembly, please make the sub-assembly as flexible assembly as well. Otherwise, you will not be able to get it as flexible. So um, this is very useful um, design intent when it comes to um, changing the geometry without having um, to do more configurations or changing the file names or maybe saving the file with different names and different locations. Um, so, um, Back to uh, the, the, the roadmap, we finished with the flexible components, and let's speak a little bit about um, fillet and chamfer. You know, fillet and chamfer is a very common feature that each and every day we are using it multiple times in different parts. And um, the problem actually that when you are changing um, um, your design intent, for example, adding features or removing features before the fillet, SolidWorks will never understand that, hey, this is, that there, there should be a new edges somewhere. And um, um, to do that in the past, we have to remove the missing references, the missing edges, and we have to reselect them one by one. In, in 2020, we changed the game. So let's see first what's the design challenges that we are into now. So in 2019, that's what happened to um, that particular part when I'm changing the design intent. So for the, this particular design intent, I'm changing um, uh, the geometry not to include it with only one post feature, I mean extrude feature. I will split it into two features, the extrude and um, uh, the extrude cut and the extrude boss. And with that, maybe some features that are not dependent on that, so it will accept it. So for the fillet feature, SolidWorks will usually um, um, show the missing edges. And what I have to do is to reselect the edges again. Um, 
So simply, this is a time consuming um, to remove the missing edges and then to reselect them again. Um, consider that you have multiple edges in different locations and maybe not in, in similar scenario that SolidWorks will help you to select all the edges together. So um, let's see what's, what's going to happen in, in SolidWorks 2020. So um, I will bring up the same component again and I will try to change the design intent by the same way by having extrude boss and then extrude cut in two different features. Um, and then I will try to move to the fillet. Of course, SOLIDWORKS will tell me that, hey, you do have some missing edges. However, in this time, I will not remove them. In this time, um, um, please remember, if you are using 2020, not to remove the missing edge, let SOLIDWORKS help you in that by right-click the missing edges and try to click repair the all missing references. And SOLIDWORKS will try to bring all the missing references. It's a great feature, actually. You know, um, maybe some of you will consider that, hey, it's, it's not a big deal to do that. I can just remove the edges and then bring them back. But remember that we are talking about user experience. So if you can achieve a particular task by one or two clicks, it will be more better than having them in five clicks, let's say. Um, so um, we finished with um, the fillet and the chamfer repair. Let's move to um, the surface offset. I believe that some of you has um, getting that um, error message in SOLIDWORKS when trying to use offset surface and maybe SOLIDWORKS is advising, hey, would you, would you be able to reduce um, the, um, the distance of offset? And in some cases, no, this is not my intent. I need to keep going with that um, specific distance. And um, what we have to do is to try to find where is the failing phases that um, they do have a minimum risk of curvature is less than the offset distance. So let's see that in action. So in, in this example, um, I will try to make an offset for the surfaces of five millimeter. And when I'm hit OK, I will get that message, the error message. And the point is that um, in the time being, in 2019 or maybe prior to that, I will now be able to identify where is, where are the missing, the, the failing faces. But I have to go to the evaluate and then check and then um, try to find um, the minimum reach curvature, which is um, below my uh, particular value. And then um, I will remove them from the offset surface feature by selecting all the faces, for example, and then exclude the failing faces that they would not meet the five millimeter offset distance. And then I need to continue adding more features, like for example, I need to trim, and then later on, I will add the offset, um, the offset um, surface. Um, so for, for that being said, um, it's, um, it's, it's a long process, and in, in some cases, you will not be able to identify where exactly is the failing faces. And for that, in 2020, we have changed the game a little bit. Um, so, for example, I will take the same part, and I will try to go for offset surface. And then, SOLIDWORKS will analyze where are the faces that will not meet the 5 millimeter um, offset distance. And simply, I can remove them. No need anymore to go for check and then check for the minimum breed of curvature and then try to exclude the face. You can do that directly from the offset surface. This is a real enhancement here. And then you can continue adding more, um, more to your feature, um, like trimming or um, later on you can add the fillet um, to, to your surfaces. Um, so this is one part, actually, of the enhancements inside surfaces. Another part of the enhancement 
is to use the thicken. If you can notice here while thickening the surface, we do have a new option over there, which is the direction of the thicken. Um, so to understand that more, um, I have brought a, a very simple example that comes from the tutorial. So if you are using 2020 today, you will be able to um, find this uh, part in your um, um, installation location. So uh, while doing a thickness, um, a thickened surface, um, or a thickness to the surface, so uh, usually SOLIDWORKS will try to move in parallel, I mean normal to each of the surface. And this sometimes specifically where the common edges between um, a sharp corner between the two surfaces, SOLIDWORKS will, may uh, create some um, um, unpredicted geometry. And the new thing in SOLIDWORKS uh, 2020 that we have the ability today to select the direction for the thickens. So for that direction, you can select um, a single line, you can select a plane, you can select two points, you can select two vertices, you can select also a temporary axis or reference axis as well, or even you can select one of the faces or surfaces that you are thickening them. So by this, you will not get any problem with the thickened surface and you will not get that um, in between um, 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 components or geometries that you don't want it. Um, so moving back to the roadmap, we have completed the uh, surface offset and let's move to um, the mesh editing. So with the mesh editing, um, we have increased it a lot in, in the user experience actually during the past three years and we are adding more. So let's review together what we have added um, with the mesh editing capabilities inside of SOLIDWORKS and then we will speak about what's new in 2020. So um, in 2019, I mean up to 2019, um, there was a lot of enhancements if, of um, importing an STL file. And once we are importing it, it's not become a graphic imported body anymore. So we can actually um, create some surfaces from the mesh by selecting um, the small triangle faces, we call it facets. And then SOLIDWORKS will try to um, identify these faces or um, maybe by a planar surface or cylindrical or conical. So you have um, four types of surfaces over there. And um, um, in some cases, you may not be able to select it easily. So you need to select multiple small triangle faces, um, like in the top plane here. And to do so, first you have to select the type of the surface, which is a planar surface, and then right-click and then use the paint. And the paint will enable you, um, SOLIDWORKS, to, to select all um, the face in um, tolerance with the same tolerance. And we will do the same with that internal um, surface, so I will be using um, the painting to select all or some, not all of them actually, and then SOLIDWORKS will try to calculate all the similar uh, facets that they are sharing the same tolerance. And by this way, I have um, converted from graphic mesh to a surface directly from one feature, which is surface from the mesh. So I can continue adding more surface features, like for example, I can net them, I can trim them, um, I can convert them to the solid. But um, all the graphic um, mesh body um, or the graphic body, it's being selected as one item. So I need, for example, um, in some cases to create um, slices. So it's not analytical geometry, maybe it's a little bit complex and I need all the cross sections um, somewhere to start creating my model, the 3D model itself. And to do that, we have introduced a slicing feature. So the slicing feature will enable you to select planes, parallel planes with a particular distance and by clicking OK, SOLIDWORKS will create all the cross sections related to these planes. And again, it's parametric. So whenever you're changing the plane distance, SOLIDWORKS will be able to generate for you the new cross-section. And later on, you can um, edit that sketch or maybe convert entities of that sketch and um, make it with a proper dimension. 
if you like to create um, a solid body from that. So how can I uh, convert from the mesh, um, the graphic, to the mesh, real mesh body? To do that, we have uh, introduced a convert to mesh body. And um, then, for now, it's a mesh body that I can assign material, for example. I can get a cross section. Of course, if it's a water tide, if a solid um, mesh body. And also, I can segment it. Segmented means that try to find all the edges and to split um, this um, mesh into faces. So now I can select a face and do a sketch on that face. And to do that in one click, while converting, you have a simple option there that um, um, called group facets into faces. So once you select that option, SolidWorks will try to group all the faces and um, becomes um, that the solid mesh becomes into uh, separate faces. And again, you can assign material and you can bring up the weight and you can directly use that without any editing into your part or assembly if you wish. So for example, I will be adding more material to my mesh body. And to be able to combine them, I have to convert the solid body into a mesh body, which is that new cylindrical body. By doing so, um, now I will be able to combine them together. So please, remember if you need to add material and use a normal um, um, solid features, try to convert um, your mesh body first. So, um, that was very good, but what we have added in 2020, that's, that's the question. So, um, in SolidWorks 2020, um, today, you have extra capabilities. Like, for example, if I need to fill it um, directly, I can do that right away. And even I can change from fill it to chamfer. And also, I can use a normal um, surface features. Like, for example, if I need to offset from the surface, or I can, I can trim as well. So um, currently I'm extending the surface a little bit to be able to trim um, with the mesh body. Remember, it's a very complex mesh body, by the way. However, we still be able to um, trim it and use a normal surface features into that. Not only that, we can identify where are the gaps if there is um, some faulty faces, and also we can use right away the delete surface, just like a normal surface body or solid body. So you can just hit delete and SolidWorks will try to fill it. Um, previously, we have introduced the fill, only the fill, um, um, I mean delete with the fill, or uh, only delete, but in, in SolidWorks 2020, also, we have introduced delete with fill, so SolidWorks will be able to fill um, the gaps into your solids. So, um, not only that, we have added two features. Um, the first one is the summate um, feature, and the second one is the body compare. And um, let's, let's find out how can we use them. So, for example, I have just imported um, a huge a number of facets um, included in my STL file. And to continue working with that, it's not a big deal, but it will really affect the performance. So it's a good idea to reduce the number of facets into smaller number. And to do so, I have been using the SMAT uh, faces, which enable you to reduce the number of facets. And to start working with the reverse engineering um, um, concept, the first thing that you have to do is to create an axis. And to do that, SolidWorks today has the ability to create um, a reference axis directly from um, the facets or triangle faces. Um, and um, by doing that, you, start, you, you can start creating your solid, solid part. So for example, I will create some planes. I will be using the slicing feature that we have mentioned before. And then I will be using um, some enhanced sketches. So I, I just created my own sketch um, according to the cross section that created from the slicing feature. And then I will revolve that and then making one teeth and then pattern them with a circular pattern. But in certain stage, I need to make sure that my newly created 
components, it's similar by somehow to the mesh body. So I need, I need to compare between them. And that's what we have uh, here in 2020. So you can go ahead and um, compare between the graphic mesh or the solid mesh, as you like. So for example, I need to compare between the mesh, the graphic mesh, and also um, the body. So in the first selection box, I have to select the body. In the second selection box, I have to select the graphic mesh. And also I can convert the mesh, the graphic mesh, into solid mesh. Um, that will enable me to have more accuracy in the comparison. And SOLIDWORKS will show me directly where are the areas that I missed to uh, remove material from, or where are the areas that I need to remove or maybe an added um, material to. So um, here I'm trying to do the same with the solid mesh, and then I'm comparing between the newly created uh, solid body and the mesh body. And from here, I can bring them uh, more to the accuracy. So it will take, of course, more time from SOLIDWORKS to analyze um, the comparison between them. But eventually, we will get that. Remember that this is the small color over here. It's really presenting um, the range that's outside the legend. So anything is above um, that number will take that color, which means that, for example, here, I'm moving from, um, let's say, green to that particular number through a red, which means that uh, this is a missing um, feature. I need to remove material from here, and also in the other areas, it moves from blue, blue to that particular color, which means that, yeah, I have added more material here. Maybe I need to consider removing some material from there. Again, this is not an inspection report. So um, you cannot depend on that as um, a complete reverse engineering module, but it's a very good idea in, in um, while working with the reverse engineering, creating your um, uh, model to check whether you are in a good condition, do you need to add material, remove material from, some, from somewhere, and what will be the accuracy between the generated solid uh, part and the mesh um, uh, or the scan data. So um, I think with that, we have completed um, um, the four topics that we need to cover today. Uh, flexible components. Um, please remember to use this icon um, whenever you need to create multiple versions of the file with different geometries without changing the name. And also try to use a fillet repair and instead of removing the missing references or the missing um, edges. And with the surface offset, um, um, try to um, depend on SOLIDWORKS to identify where are the failing faces. And also, it's a good idea to use the direction of um, while using the thickened surface. And finally, the mesh editing, the two new things, which is um, the summation and the body compare. Um, so I think with that, we, 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 need, we will shift to um, um, Elena, because Elena will Hello. go for another question. Yes, Elena. Yes, Thank you so much for this presentation and showing us some of the new enhancements you can find in SolidWorks 2020. And now it's time for the second question. We would like to know when do you plan to upgrade to SolidWorks 2020? Okay, I think we got all the responses. So, so thanks a lot for joining this webinar. Um, um, just, just before moving yes. on, uh, Alina, if, if you do have any question, uh, please uh, post it in the, in the question area. Okay, so thank you very much for joining the webinar. Uh, we hope you like it. We will do another webinar at the end of November and we'll show you more of the new enhancement of the new version of SOLIDWORKS. And we hope we connect soon and we'll talk to you soon. So if you have any questions or you want to see more information about the new features of SOLIDWORKS 2020, you can contact us or you can contact your preferred reseller or go to our website, solidworks.com. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Thank you, have a nice day for, for you all.